hace 35 años, en un lugar de Grecia, un caballero llamado Popolón fue hasta el monte Unos a rescatar a Afrodita, su esposa, que había sido secuestrada. Aprovechando su ausencia, el malvado Galius se hizo con el control de su castillo, lanzando una terrible maldición sobre todos sus habitantes y raptando a Pampas, el hijo aún por nacer de Popolón y Afrodita. Popolón y Afrodita se adentraron en el castillo, lucharon con valentía y se enfrentaron a Yomar, Elohim, Jajakla, Bareche. Eotimeo, Lefa, Nahuabra, Ascher, Shiwole y finalmente al poderoso Galio. Galius murió y su maldición desapareció con él. Pampas nació, todos fueron felices y ya no se supo nada más de ellos hasta hoy. La oscuridad se cierne sobre las tierras de Mogdos. Un poder sobrenatural ha surgido de sus entrañas y amenaza con invadirlo todo. Los ejércitos que se acercan para combatir al mal son presa fácil de una fuerza sobrenatural que retuerce sus mentes, causándoles una locura jamás vista. Popolón y Afrodita, inmunes a tal locura, gracias a la protección de los dioses, hubieran sido la gran esperanza. Pero el inevitable paso del tiempo ha hecho mella en ellos y ya son demasiado ancianos. Esta vez serán sus hijos Pampas y Selene quienes entrarán en el castillo y protagonizarán esta gran aventura. Del creador de Ghost y prisionero de guerra y del creador de Zombie Incident llega por fin la secuela del mítico Maze of Gallius que hacía 30 años que todos esperábamos.
De nuevo un castillo gigante donde perderse con montones de bichos y criaturas. De nuevo 10 mundos que explorar y 10 demonios que vencer. De nuevo una gran cantidad de objetos que encontrar y coleccionar. De nuevo la ayuda de los dioses. De nuevo hechizos, magias y secretos. Pero esta vez viene para MSX2. Con mapa de castillo explorado. Con misiones. Con partida guardada en el mismo cartucho. Y con una espectacular banda sonora en sonido SCC de la mano de Grito. Una aventura que no puedes perderte. All right, so thanks for uh, for being here. Are we having a good time so far? Yeah, pretty good place here. Um, good. So uh, I I get you uh, to interview Fran, and I'm uh, quite quite proud of uh, being allowed to do that. Uh, so I think the organizer saw me first five minutes ago. So that was quite a brave move, I guess. Uh, anyway, uh, we just saw the video of uh, Pampers and Celine, and it is an amazing game. So, thank you very much. So, thank you for making it. Uh, My pleasure. Okay, <laughs> thanks. Um, anyway, um, I, I first want to talk a little bit about uh, the history of the game and uh, how it was made. And um, so, um, my first question is actually, when, when did you start working on this game? I, I started on working on this game. Well, the reason I started working on this game is because it is, uh, when I was a teenager, yeah. I used to play the, the Maze of Gallius, like I think most of here people did, right? Yeah. yeah. So I became a big fan, I really, I really loved it. It became one of my favorite games. And well, since then I've been looking forward to play a sequel or, yeah. or something similar. Yeah. So we had Shalom, but yeah. it had nothing to do with the Gallius yeah. type of yeah. game, right? You know? And we had remakes, very well done by the way. Yeah. But uh, we didn't have a new adventure. Yeah. And then five years ago, I remember I was talking to a friend, and he told me, hey, friend, um, there's, a new, there's a new game. Someone built a new game. It's called No Gallius. And I said, wait, wait, you said, you said Gallius? You said Gallius? So, well, uh, I started to investigate. Yeah. And then I saw a Kickstarter campaign of 25,000 euros. And I said, wow, that's, that's important. Something is, something, uh, someone built a, yeah. a Gallius-type game. Yeah. And I was very excited. Then I, I played the demo. Yeah. And, uh, well, uh, it was not the game I was expecting, actually. So uh, I get, well, I was disappointed. And later on, I, uh, I was told that the game No Gallius was because the, the producer's surname is No Gallius. Yeah. So he used No Gallius like No Gallius. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if he, if, he, if he made it on purpose or, or not, but he created some sort of a, um, <clears throat> a marketing action that worked very well. In fact, a lot of people put money on, on that Kickstarter campaign. The thing is, I was talking to people and I was not the only disappointed. Yeah. And uh, the sad thing is that we didn't have the maze of Gallius type of game we were expecting. And I said, well, that's not fair. <laughs> Something yeah. has to be done. Yeah. And then I thought, OK. So when, when, when was this? When it was uh, the 2019. OK. Yeah. 2019, 2020. Yeah. So I said to myself, Something has to be done. Yeah. And I had two games already done. So yeah. I have Ghost, I have Prisoner of War, and yeah. I felt confident. Yeah. Because I had the experience of doing something in MSX. Yeah, yeah. And I said, okay, let's do it. Let's do it. So the community yeah. deserves a yeah. game they, they're expecting. Yeah. So it was February 2020 when I started to create Pampas and Celine. Okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, All right. yeah, that, that, that was the, the date. And, so, and, uh, and, and this, uh, the, the, the title for the game, I mean, uh, I, I noticed that there was some discussion about uh, the, the, the names that you gave the characters. Um, mm -hmm. uh, so apparently th this is a bit of a uh, tricky... Uh, by the way, do you want a licorice? Oh, yes, thank you yeah. very much. Okay. You so, the, uh, you, you mean the game Pampas? No, I, The name Pampas? Yeah, yeah that, that one specifically, but also... Uh, mm -hmm. was, I'll have a licorice too, but first question. Cheers. Um, Cheers. Cheers, man. Cheers. 
Mm. Anyone else? Mm. Words. Oh. Um, oh, sorry. I um, I haven't completed my question. Yeah. So the question is, um, was was the game always going to be uh, called Pampas and Celine, or did you have a different mm. title in mind at first? <laughs> the first name was The Maze of Demons, because it was supposed to be a mm, a game like Galius, mm -hmm. not a sequel. Just mm -hmm. a game, you know, t uh, um, a game with the same gameplay. Mm -hmm. So we called the The Maze of Demons instead of The Maze of Galius. But later, people start to complain from the team. Oh, this this title is well, we don't like it a lot. So mm -hmm. we open a discussion, trying to find a title for this game. We even I, I, uh, I started a post on MSX Org, ORG, yeah. just to ask people to the community, okay, what, what title could we have? Yeah. And people were very respons um, responsive and we have lots of uh, options. But I didn't get in love with, with any of one. Yeah. So in the end, we started to talk inside the team and we said, okay, let's call it Papa, Pampa San Celine, the Maze of Demons. Yeah, okay. I, and uh, I, I was wondering another thing. Uh, a, a while ago, I um, I made a game for for a pocket PC, and um, it was called Lemmings mm -hmm. because it looked exactly like Lemmings. Mm -hmm. It had Lemmings in it, and uh, at some point, I got a cease and desist letter from Sony. Uh, you didn't. I, I, did, 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 did Konami not complain about your game? No, no, I had no complaint because we, we didn't copy anything directly from, from, from the original Mesa of Callius. Okay, so in that case you, you, you were safe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you, you made an earlier game, Prisoner of War, also for, uh, for MSX. And then, uh, and yes, the, yeah. And that one was specifically for MSX1? Right? Yes, for MSX1. The reason yeah. is uh, I had an MSX1 when I was a child. And right. I could not play Metal Gear at home because I didn't have the hardware. So I had to go to our friends to, to play there. And I said, oh, it should be great to create a, a Metal Gear for MSX1. The other reason is I remember playing Metal Gear and to, to see you, you had to be yeah. right in the horizontal line or vertical line. And I said, why? Why not an, a 90 degree angle? Because I thought about this, and I think that's quite easy to do. So I tried to do it in MS6-1, and I succeeded. Yeah. Yeah. So in the end, okay, let's let's do a let's do a, a Metal Gear for MS6-1. Why not? But, but why is Pampas and Celine not for MS6-1 then? Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, at the beginning, we wanted to be MS6-1, like the original one. But well, um, Frank in France. Yeah. I call him Frankie. He's the graphic designer. Yeah. So when he joined, uh, yeah. in, uh, it was in the summertime of 2020, yeah. after six months uh, working, I showed him all the things I had, and MSX1. Yeah. He started to work on it. But uh, we realized that no matter what we did, it was not equal or better than the original Mesa of Gallius. Yeah. And I said, no, no, uh, I don't want to dishonor the, the Konami game yeah. with something mm, worse. And we didn't realize, we didn't um, manage to do something great right, because of yeah. the MSX1 palette colors. You know how uh, how they are, right? Yeah. So in the end, we decided to go to MSX2. Yeah. Especially, you can change the colors and you can do dark colors background and yeah. brighter colors on the yeah. foreground, and you can select the palette in, in yeah. whatever you want. So it was fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, uh, speaking of MSX, MSX1, MSX2, can, can I ask you some technical questions on the game? Of course. I, I, I hope the audience is okay with that. I, I want, yeah, let's, let's have some details here. Um, so um, maybe, maybe uh, the most important f question first, um, do, you, do you write in C or do you write in Assembler? Both. Both. So for the PC version, for the PC version, I wrote everything on C. It is the language I use for my for my normal games, the, yeah. the games I do to uh, to get money, yeah. like Metal and Epic and, and so. So I first created the game in in PC because yeah. it's easier to make changes to because w when when you make a change, I, I excuse me, when you create a game, you have to make a lot of change. Yeah. 
you, you think the game is great, but it's not. You need people to test it and, and tell you what's wrong, what they don't understand, what it's hard. So you have to change and change and change, even yourself. Yeah. You play and you say, no, that's not comfortable, or that's not fun, or this enemy, it's the something. Yeah. So in C, it's easy to change the code over and over again. However, Assembler, Assembler is something different. When you change something, then something else start, uh, stops working. <laughs> so for the PC version, everything on C. Yeah. For the M6 version, everything on Assembler. And were those developed uh, in tandem? PC and, and uh, mm -hmm. did, 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 you de did you develop the version for PC and for MSX in uh, uh, together at the same time? I started on PC and then I did the port to, yeah. uh, to MSX. Yeah. But the data is the same. So the okay. graphics, uh, the position of the worlds, the screens, everything is it's just the code to recode. So you basically uh, started with, uh, with PC code but MSX gra graphics. Exactly, yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. And we've been swapping to MSX, now PC. Yeah. Now MSX is better, now PC is better. Yeah. <laughs> I'm swapping from one to another one. Nice, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I see, yeah, okay. Um, so, um, uh, one of the things that I noticed in the game is that you have a very careful use of, of palettes. Mm -hmm. uh, how, how did you pick your palettes? Is there more than one palette? And uh, does it, is, is there a change of the palettes uh, during the frame? And yeah, uh, yeah, so a palette, well, we, what we did is to select uh, six, or seven, six or seven colors that are, they were going to be common for the, for the whole game. Yeah. And uh, two colors for the enemies. Yeah. So we, we changed the screen and there are different enemies. We could select different colors for those enemies. Right. And four colors for the background, for, I mean for the, um, for the scenario. Right. So maybe you are in the, the first one, everything is bluish. Then you change to another one and everything is greenish or yeah. reddish or I don't know, you go to the sewers and everything is half green, half blue. So uh, we used, uh, and for the main character too, we have one color that changed depending on if you are wearing pampas or, or, or you, are you are, hello, have okay. you been turned or off? you're wearing uh, Celine. Ah, so yeah. it's white in pampas, it's uh, purple in, in Celine. We even uh, switch a, a color. Right. To customize. Okay. Now here, Frankie and Ephraim, he did that outstanding work uh, selecting a, a palette uh, yep. for the, yeah, yeah. And okay. there's another change of palette in, uh, in water screens. Screen when there's water. Yeah. So, so when uh, after the, below the water, the yeah. challenge, the, uh, the colors are changed. So everything looks bluish in, in normal water or uh, purplish in, nice. in the sewers yeah. and, uh, yeah, so yeah. So that's, that's the palette effects. Yeah, yeah, ex exactly, yeah. yeah, yeah. Nice. We yeah. work a lot with palettes. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Okay, awesome. Um, so um, one other question that I have is, uh, you, you have those uh, uh, huge bosses at the end of each world. Yeah. So the first one that I saw was this massive uh, skull, and uh, it's, it's, it's way too large to be a sprite. It is, it is too, way too large to be a sprite. How did you correctly. do that? So what we did is to use the copy blocks yeah. Option from the from the graphic card from MSX2. The good thing is that while you are working in, in the game, yeah. in parallel the graphic card is copying uh, an image from one part to the other to the other one. So, so we did it in uh, in uh, in parallel. So we had to copy, then clear, then copy again, move, clear, copy yeah. again. So no, they they're not sprites. Okay, so that's also why the skull is basically moving at half the frame rate then. Ex exactly. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Okay. It's moving three uh, every three frames. Really? Yeah. Okay. So one frame. Hello. Okay. One frame to uh, to clear. Yeah. And two frames to to copy it. Okay. Nice. Okay. Thank <laughs> you. Um, My pleasure. Uh, um, by the way, um, I, I love what you did with the anti-aliasing on the water. You have multiple colors to to make the waves smooth on the water. Yeah. Yeah. It's amazing work, and then you have those uh, uh, splash waves when you when you jump in. Oh yeah, and yeah. <laughs> they slowly dissipate. It's yeah, yeah. very nice stuff. The waves, um, the waves is an is an animation, uh, an image animation. So yeah. just one, 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 and the, the waves when you splash, it's yeah. a sprite. Yeah, yeah, I figured. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You very have to share a sprite. Okay, here waves, uh, we use this. Here there's lava, we use it for for bloops, for the blobs. Yeah. And here somewhere else we use the same sprite for something else. So yeah. Yeah. sharing a sprite for different things. All right, yeah. amazing, <laughs> nice. Um, let's see. Um, oh, one, one other question, uh, one more tech question, all right? Um, 
so um, the, the game, is it always running at 60 hertz? Yes, always running at 60 hertz. Something I really like uh, well, from my games yeah. is to be as smooth as possible. Yeah. And yeah, yeah, it's always running 60, 60 hertz. Yeah. And All you, of and, them, and so you... a Ghost, a Prisoner of War, and Pampas and Selene. Yeah. And you don't take into account uh, machines that may require 50 hertz or? Oh yeah, 50, 50 hertz is it's easier because you have more time each frame. So depending yeah, okay. on the computer, it goes to 50 or 60 years. And you can change yeah. it if you want. If you press yeah. F5, when you are in initializing the game, yeah. you can you swap to 50 to 60 yeah. or 60 to 50. I like 50, but my tester says, hey, 50 is too, is too slow. I prefer 60. I try 60 and I say, mm, that's crazy. It's too fast, too quick. Y so depending on the player. Right. <laughs> yeah, no, your tester is right. 60 is better. Yeah, oh, really? <laughs> <That's> <laughs> okay, <insane>. okay. <laughs> All right. They're very smart. They're, they're um, the finance, the te tested team. So uh, let's, uh, let's uh, uh, get to the next section. I want to uh, know a little bit about uh, uh, what's next. And I spoke to you uh, before, so <laughs> I, I, I know a little bit what I can ask and what I cannot ask. Yeah. Um, but um, uh, everyone knows that, uh, that a Windows version is, uh, is imminent. Um, uh, yes, exactly. Yes. And I'm, I'm really looking forward to that. But can, uh -huh. you, can you maybe tease us a bit about uh, what will be added to that version that is not in the MSX version? Of course, of course. The main difference, well, I've been three months working on adapting the game to modern users. Yeah. By change and change and change. So I have a, a set of testers and play, uh, today players, and they say, hey, Fran, you should do this. Hey, Fran, you should do that. Hey, Fran, you should do this. I say, yeah, yeah, sir. Oh, yeah, sir. Oh, yeah, sir. So uh, the current version is 92. And each version has uh, from 5 to 15 changes. So we can talk about maybe a 1,000 changes. Yeah. Incredible. But the main, difference, the main difference between the MSX version and the PC version is the multiplayer. So in PC, we have multiplayer. We can play on a split screen. And each one uh, controls, well, uh, player one controls, controls Pampas, and player two controls Celine. And everyone can go wherever they want in the castle. Nice. And they can teleport to their mates. Yeah whenever they want, so they cannot get lost. Okay. Say, so, do you go, I'll, keep, uh, I'll, I'll catch you later. Okay, okay, and then you catch. Or if someone dies, the other one can go and revive him. So split screen, multiplayer, on yeah. one screen, option will be available. Yeah, and it's also nice. remote uh, um, multiplayer. So you play with your screen, and you have a small screen of your mate playing in, at, at home with the other character. That, that's, a, that's a big difference. Nice, yeah. But graphics are the same, the yeah. sprites are the same, and the, yeah. the bosses are the same. Yeah. Hey, and uh, one other question. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, you, you seem to be uh, a man on, on a mission, right? You have this MSX1 of your youth that you really enjoyed, and I think many of us here are in the same position. Mm -hmm. You replicated uh, Metal Gear on MSX1, yes. and you replicated a Maze of Gallius. Yes. Uh, uh, do you feel that you have achieved your mission, or I what? Excuse me. Do you do you feel that you have achieved your mission, or is there something else that you really would like to see realized somewhere in I, the future? I, I reach all the missions I have to reach. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Yeah, I know. For me, the big project was Pampas and Sailing. It's been my MSX, the, the MSX project of my life. It took me much more than expected. Yeah. I I used a lot of time, and I I invested a. Uh, Big amount of money on it, yeah. but luckily I managed to sell all the 500 first games, yeah. and I recovered everything. Yeah, I'm, I'm, and it's, uh, I'm lucky because I'm happy to say that we are selling the second batch of 300 more games. That's, so, that's an amazing uh, amount of games for. for yeah, it is. Platform. It is. It's a pain yes. in the ass to do everything because yeah. it's a lot of work to do. Yeah. Uh, oh my god! But in the end, I'm happy because the MSX community has what they deserve. And I'm sure that everyone here in the audience is very grateful for your efforts. So thank you. Um, thank you very much. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. I hope you enjoyed the game. We certainly did.